My name is Mackenzie May and I'm the chair of the Civil Rights Commission. I'm going to call this meeting for February 28th, 2022 to order. I want to welcome everyone joining us this evening. As we begin, I'd like to note for the record that this meeting has remote participation by members of the commission and city staff as authorized under Minnesota statute section 13D.021 due to the declared local public health emergency. The city will be recording and posting the meetings to the meeting to the city's website and YouTube channel as a means of increasing public access and transparency. This meeting is public and subject to the open Minnesota open meeting law. Thank you. Um, and at this time, I will ask the clerk to call the roll so we can verify a quorum for this meeting. Commissioner Burquist. Here. Commissioner Cobia. Commissioner Crowder. Here. Commissioner Davis. Oh, yeah. Kobe is here. Yep, I got gotcha. you. Commissioner Devnish. Commissioner Fine. Commissioner Folk. Here. Commissioner Hartz. Here. Commissioner Herkman. Here. Commissioner Lord. Here. Commissioner Rance. Here. Commissioner Shepard. Here. Commissioner Stignani. Here. Commissioner Shoemake. Commissioner May. Is Commissioner here. Devonish or Fine here? Yes, Commissioner Fine is here. Commissioner Davis just got yeah, here. I'm sorry, I was a little bit late. Yep, I, I saw you there. Um, OK, I've got you uh, 13 present. I have 13 present. OK, thank you. Let the um, record reflect that we have a quorum. Um, and then second on me is the adoption of the agenda. Commissioners, um, the agenda for today's meeting is before us. May I please have a motion to adopt the agenda? Move oh, the agenda. 90 seconds. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Fine and Stignani. Um, so we have a proper motion before us by Commissioner Fine and seconded by Commissioner Stignani. Um, is there any discussion before the clerk calls the roll? Seeing none, I will ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. Commissioner Burquist? Yes. Commissioner Cobia? Crowder? Yep. Davis? Yes. Fine? Yes. Oak? Yes. Hartz? Yes. Kirkman? Yes. Lord? Yes. Rants? Yes. Shepard? Yes. Stignani? Yes. May? Yes. We have 13. Sorry, I muted myself. That motion passes and um, I'll ask the clerk, or yeah, the agenda is adopted. Thank you. Um, next is the acceptance of minutes from the December 20th meeting from 2021. I may I please have a motion to accept the minutes. I move to accept the minutes. Can I have a second? I second that. Commissioner Davis seconds that. Oh, thank you, Commissioner Davis. So um, we have a proper motion before us. Is there any discussion before the clerk calls the roll? Okay, seeing none, um, I will ask the clerk to call the roll on the motion. 
Commissioner Bergquist. I'll abstain. I wasn't able to open the attachment. Okay. Cobia? Yes. Crowder? Yes. Davis? Yes. Fine? Yes. Folk? Yes. Hearts? Yes. Herkman? Yes. Lord? Yes. Rance? Yes. Shepherd? Abstain. Stignani? Yes. May? Yes. So you have 11 eyes. Thank you. I'll two abstains. My... Or three. I'm sorry. Three. Two. I'm sorry. That's right. Two. My apologies. Thank you. Um, that motion passes and the minutes are accepted as presented. <clears throat> um, so item four on the agenda um, for this evening, we have an update from the commission uh, on the commission appointments from the Civil Rights Department. Um, this will be give, this presentation will be given by Kayla. Um, so I'll invite Kayla to give that report. Thank you so much, Jeremy. Hi, commissioners. Um, good to see you all, even in this virtual space. Um, this is going to be a fairly brief presentation. I just wanted to touch base regarding the new appointments. We sent out um, a general email to all of the commissioners a couple weeks ago, giving you a bit of a breakdown of what to expect timing wise. Um, due to a new clerk's office rule, we can't appoint anyone outside of the traditional cycles, which unfortunately means that we have to wait for the spring cycle to fill our open civil rights commission seats. Thankfully, that's not too far off, um, actually. So recruitment will open on March 18th and go through April 15th. Um, and we were originally hoping that we were going to be able to have new commissioners ready for a May meeting if we moved the, the meeting a week later, but realized that the date we were hoping for is actually Memorial Day. So we won't have a meeting on that date. So we likely won't have new appointment um, folks ready to go until um, the June commission meeting. Um, we do really want to actively engage current commissioners in outreach for that um, that recruitment cycle. So there will be a presentation from staff from our um, Office of Administration and Policy within the Civil Rights Department that will come next month to talk about outreach and how current commissioners can engage with the department to ensure we get um, a good number of applications from folks that would be great additions to the Civil Rights Commission. Um, we'll also consider all of the applications that were previously submitted Submitted. So like for our folks that are looking to be reappointed, you don't need to submit a new application during this cycle or anything. Um, we have yours from um, the previous cycle and we will definitely be considering those just as we would at that time. Um, really big thank you to the folks that are willing to stay on um, into the spring here who were planning to maybe be done with the commission at the end of 2021. I really appreciate it. Um, and we are, the department is planning to jump right in as normal with the commission on working on new projects and initiatives, even though we're still waiting on new appointments. So I think we have some fairly exciting things coming up here um, that you'll hear more about, but I just wanted to put on your radar that we do have a few public hearings that need to happen this year. So we're going to do some training on that fairly soon um, and get those, um, start getting those scheduled and get folks on panels ready to review those cases. Um, we'll continue working together on outreach efforts, especially as it's getting nicer and things are um, getting back to being somewhat in person. Again, it's seeming like at least for the moment. Um, we have a new payment system that is ready to be introduced fairly soon here that will make commission payments, I hope, a lot more streamlined and easy for you all to, um, to request and receive. Um, and then I do, the department definitely would like to jump right back in to review panel cases as well. So we'd like to start that this month. So I'm excited to work with um, our officers to get those scheduled and off and running. You all had a banner year last year, which we really appreciate. And we we want to keep up the momentum. Uh, with that, I'm open to any questions, but that was all I was planning to cover today. Thank you, Kayla, for that report. I do see a few questions in. Um, I don't know who came, who went first, but Mark's um, Commissioner Stignani's name is up first. 
All right, well, Kayla, um, you had mentioned earlier in another meeting that we're going to be some doing a little more, you know, hands on. Uh, you said there were actually going to be actual hearings this year uh, coming up here. Do you want to give a little flavor on that as well, or is that you know to be to be discovered later? So, uh, yeah, I can provide a little bit more information. We have approximately three cases that should go to public hearing sometime this year. Um, the sooner the better, but there is quite a bit of logistics around scheduling and requirements. And we're going to be back in the office in the Civil Rights Department in the next few weeks. Um, and a lot of that's going to be easier to do in person. But yes, I'm planning to, you know, potentially at the March meeting for sure, um, by the April meeting, have a full... Um, kind of whole training for the whole commission um, and then maybe some additional training specifically for the attorneys because those who are the people that actually will serve on the public hearing panels but yeah it should be fairly exciting so as long as everything goes to plan these would be public hearings that would you know as the title suggests be open to the public but be before a panel of three attorney commissioners um, and these are cases where we've found probable cause but where the parties have not settled in conciliation so then the next step is to go to a public hearing so I can provide more detail about kind of what that means and what to expect um, if you are one of the folks that's going to participate as a decision maker in those cases. Great, thank, thank you. you. Commissioner Bergquist. Hi, thanks for the information. Um, I have a question that's probably more properly directed to Andrea Neff of the city attorney's office, but then I also have some other questions for Kayla. So um, later on in our agenda today, we're supposed to be uh, electing our executive team for the commission for the year, presumably. And my question that's a, a question of a legal nature is who is eligible for those positions? Because we have apparently some commissioners whose term expired at the end of 2021 who didn't reapply, but have agreed to stay on until it looks like June, according to the proposed agenda. And then as best I understand, there are at least two of us whose terms expired at the end of 2021, but they reapplied and are still awaiting a decision with respect to that. Are, you know, I don't know how many total commissioners that affects, it's two plus some number is my guess. Um, should those people be eligible for any of those executive positions? Um, and if so, what's the rationale? Because they may not be on the commission starting in June. Um, so that, that's my question to Andrea in terms of eligibility for those positions. And that raises um, my questions or concerns for Kayla with respect to the this strange situation the commission is in that we're sort of bleeding over from the 2021 commission to the 2022 commission. And there has been, you know, the the way the commission was informed about the process of recruiting and interviewing commissioners last year was entirely not transparent. We were not told about this pilot program with the PCOC. We were not told that the department was going to hold off on um, interviewing and selecting new commissioners to recommend to the city council. We were not told any of this while the the pilot plan was in place. We were simply told, oh, we didn't get enough applications. We're just going to extend the deadline. And we were told that repeatedly. We're just extending the deadline. We were never told that, no, we're actually not going to fill those seats until June of 2022. And I'm really sort of disappointed in the lack of transparency, the lack of good lines of communication between the department and the commission. And I'm also also really concerned that this is going to set a precedent that the department feels it's no longer bound to fill vacant seats at the end of every year as it is bound to do that it could just decide well we kind of like the way the commission is now we don't want to you know we don't want to change things up you know maybe we're just not satisfied with the people who have applied um, it seems to me very important that the department fulfill its role in interviewing and recommending candidates to fill the seats on the commission and that the department hand off those recommendations to the city council so the city council and the mayor can do their job under the ordinance of filling the seats in the commission and to let to let the commission sort of sit in this sort of vague middle ground is not doing a service to the commission because we need to have a unified team at the start of the year and we do not 
Uh, we didn't even have a meeting last month. So I think it's really disruptive to the commission and I'm really sort of disappointed at the lack of transparency. So I guess my question for you, Kayla, is why weren't we told about this pilot project and about these intentions early on in the process in October, November of last year? Why were we simply just told, oh, we're trying to get more applications. We'll be moving forward on it. And, and that's not what happened. So that, that's my question for you, Kayla, while we await news from Andrea as well. Thanks. Sure, and I appreciate all those comments and definitely that it's not ideal that we're having to wait until May or June to have new folks. Um, there was definitely no intent to be less than transparent along the way. We really didn't have enough applicants and that's why we kept expand expanding the deadline or extending the deadline was because we just weren't getting enough folks. The original idea was that yes, we would work together with the PCOC and as a department go through the whole appointment process as a whole. Um, that I mean, I don't know exactly when that decision was made, but it was around the time that we were considering, you know, how we were going to handle this without having enough applicants. Um, the the when I explained, I think it was in our December meeting um, that we were working together as a department to do that. That really was the time that that had officially been decided and we were moving towards, hey, we're really going to do this together. We're really going to do the timeline together. So it certainly wasn't any attempt to keep any information from the commission. Um, this change where we're not going to be able to appoint people until May or June is a fairly new thing based on a clerk's um, office rule. So we were planning to interview people originally in January and then potentially pushing it out to February. And then we heard from the clerk's office that we weren't going to be able to appoint anyone out of cycle. And so that's why we had to push it to May. So that was our attempt. You know, I tried in the December meeting to provide some context um, as to what was happening at that point that has since changed kind of the whole context. Um, and so as soon as we figured out that that was in fact the case, we sent that general email out to all the commissioners. And that's why I wanted to be here today to answer any questions, provide any clarification. But I completely agree that it is absolutely not ideal um, that we're having to wait until later in the spring to appoint folks. And that's why the department hopes to continue to engage with the commission, um, you know, proactively and productively between now and then so that it doesn't slow down um, the momentum, you know, as much as possible, it doesn't slow down the momentum to not have new folks. So definitely our apologies that that didn't come together um, as scheduled and we'll do our best to make sure it doesn't happen in the future. Commissioner Bergquist, did you have another question or comment? I see your hand up. Yeah, I just had a point of information for the other commissioners who maybe haven't been on the commission as long. There is precedent for the department recommending to the city council or the relevant committee on the city council an incomplete slate. Uh, so there was a year where I was up for sort of reappointment to the commission and the department recommended some people and then recommended that some seats be left blank to be filled later on, you know, through another cycle of appointments, interviews, et cetera. And so I'm also puzzled as to why the department didn't at least fill some of the seats um, because that has happened before rather than just, just doing nothing, sitting idle while so, you know certain people, people did apply, could have been interviewed, the department could have made some assessment about some of those people at least and elected not to. Um, so I, I'm, you know, sort of point of mission information, as I said, for the other commissioners, but I'm also wondering, Kayla, why the department didn't at least fill some of those seats. Were all of the people who applied not adequate, just looking on paper? Um, you know, why, why didn't the interview process even get started? So absolutely not. It was not an indication of being unhappy with the current applicants or anything like that. There was a concern about there just not being enough applicants um, to necessarily fill the seats and certainly not enough applicants to have there be really much of any choice as to who would fill the seats. Um, and so that was the idea behind not jumping right into the process, but certainly nothing about feeling that the current applicants were inadequate to serve on the commission. And I'll just note I understand that that's happened previously. It was before my time. So as I've worked on these appointment processes, we've always done everybody together um, and then filled all the seats. So we were worried we couldn't do that because we didn't have enough applicants. So that's why we were initially waiting. And then as I explained, there's been some evolution of rules around all of this, which has delayed us further. It does look like Commissioner Commissioner Devinish. Is that you? I just I just see Cindy Guest, so I'm not sure if it's Commissioner Devinish or Lord. 
I was curious. Um, yes, ma'am. It's Cindy Devinish. How are you doing today? Thank you. Um, I, I hear, just to piggyback off Commissioner Burquist's um, questions, I hear the term enough. There wasn't enough people applying. I would like to know what that definition is of enough. Uh, because I personally re, uh, referred a few people and I'm being told after me contacting them to see, you know, how it's going in the process that they never heard back or, you know, they just basically let it go because they got tired of waiting. Um, and then also, um, since we're waiting to June, and I, I, I don't think Ms. Um, Neve got a chance to respond in terms of Amy's questions in terms of the legal obligations of people mm -hmm. leaving, people coming. Do we have to re-vote in June? Or because we're not giving the new members an opportunity to be a true part of the commission? Are we running a different year from June to June? Or... Is it just going to be the same? So I know that's a lot of questions, but I think there's a lot of confusion and a lack of transparency as well. Sure, Andrea, do you want to take your couple questions? Sure, Chair May, uh, Commissioner Burquist, and uh, other commissioners who ask questions. Um, I, I hopped on just to answer the, the technical piece of this. Um, from a, a perspective simply of applying the rules of the commission, um, the ordinance does provide that members shall continue to serve until their successors have been appointed. At this point, no successors have been appointed. So all of last year's commissioners um, who've chosen to remain, who have not uh, resigned, are still commissioners and have the right to run for office, have the right to vote, um, just as they did last year. Um, in terms of how that would work logistically, um, the the, the uh, officers who are appointed or who are elected um, during elections uh, this year will continue to serve in those positions until the end of the year, unless they no longer are members of the commission, in which case that seat would open up and that um, that uh, office would be replaced through a new election. But uh, new elections wouldn't happen in June just because there were new um, commissioners. Um, I think that addresses all of the questions that had been raised, but if not, please let me know and I'll be happy to follow up. And Commissioner Devinish, I realized I didn't answer your first question either. So the um, as I had sent out in that proposal or draft proposal for how we're moving forward. So we had received nine applications for the um, for the new seats for 2022. And I believe I'd have to take a look at it again, but I think we either had nine open seats or we might have even had 10. Um, and so we really didn't have like a numerical number that felt large enough for two reasons. One, we might not have even had enough to fill all the open seats. And then two, we wouldn't have had anyone to choose from, right? So there, you know, say somebody wasn't a great candidate for whatever reason, we really wouldn't have any ability to move on to someone else. Um, unless we wanted to do something like leave seats vacant, which is not something that I had considered in this process. It is, I'm not necessarily contesting that that's happened in the past, but it isn't something that I've ever done in this process or, you know, even considered doing. So again, certainly not a reflection on the people that did apply and their applications remain excuse me, remain active and we will absolutely consider them as we come up on this new appointment cycle. So I'm glad that they applied. Definitely no, no reflection on them and their quality or ability to serve on the commission whatsoever. Thank you, Kayla. Um, Commissioner Cobia. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. I, I have like five quick points. Um, most of them are just comments. So um, <clears throat> my comments were uh, one, uh, you know, this I just, I'm just realizing that this is going to create an additional burden on the people who are on the the um, commission to do these panels in the next six months. Like, I, I just guess I never thought of that, but we're going to be doing more than we thought we were going to. Um, two is, <clears throat> let's see, the uh, the the I guess my my only real question or or I guess question comment is. You know, these are three year terms and yet we keep filling these one or two year 
partial terms. And I'm wondering if that is an ordinance or if that's something we could maybe stop doing so that we can just appoint people to three year terms um, up front. Uh, three is we seem to lose about a quarter to a fifth of the commission every year just since I've been on the commission. Um, and I, I know that our, our handbook or whatever talks about appointing people throughout the year, but you know that's never really happened. And I wonder if we should make more of an effort to do that. My fourth point is, I think, um, you know, I would suggest that we, we to get around the fact that the new people um, won't get a vote, you know, to, to Commissioner Devonish's point. I think we as who, whoever ends up as the executive board, I would ask them to commit to dissolving the executive board in June so that the new commissioners can elect someone new because that's within our powers as well, even if it's the same people who end up serving the last six months. And then the fifth question is outside of this clerk stuff, like I don't know what this clerk rule is. It doesn't, I have no idea what, like how that impacts us or where that comes from. But um, it's my understanding that the city council could appoint or the mayor could appoint people to fill these positions regardless of what the department or the clerk's office does. So would it be worth it for us to go to the city council or city council members and our mayor and say, hey, like this isn't getting done and this is a huge problem. Please appoint someone. I don't care, you know, if, if you find someone or like where they come from, but maybe do that right now. So I'll let Andrea jump in. It looks like she has her hand up on the the kind of technical question. Yeah, please, Ms. Nath. Yes, thank you. I did raise my hand because uh, the question posed about uh, filling the one and two year terms um, does raise a legal question. One of the reasons that that occurs is because of the um, the structure of the ordinance that provides for the appointment of the commissioners. It does intentionally provide for these staggered terms. Um, where certain terms begin one year and certain terms begin the next year and so on and so forth. Um, it is in 141.20b if you care to read it, but I I don't suggest it because it's clear as mud. Um, what it does is essentially is create um, creates a staggered term system where uh, if someone uh, does not complete their term, their successor has to be appointed only for the remaining time available. Um, and so the departments, all these one and two year terms are really quite unavoidable, I'm afraid. Uh, I apologize if I just created more uh, lack of clarity with that long answer. Um, the upshot is that was, that was exactly what I was under the ordinance. Yeah. yeah, thanks. And I can make one comment as to the clerk's office rule um, and the potential of contacting elected officials. Um, of course, the commissioners can, you know, take whatever action that they would like. I will say that this came directly from the city clerk, Casey Carl. Um, who runs all of the appointments for all of the boards and commissions across the whole city. So that is who is telling us we can't appoint anyone until the spring cycle. Um, okay, I did have a question, but I think Commissioner Cobia um, really touched that with like the idea to absolve. Maybe we can, like after we do elections, could we have a motion? to create that rule, depending on what the outcome of the, the election is, to absolve, or maybe not the outcome, not depending, but regardless, to absolve in June to allow for new commissioners to have a vote. Is it, That's within our powers, I heard Commissioner Cobia say. Andrea, I might let you take this one, but my understanding of what Commissioner Cobia was saying was that you could choose as the officers to yeah. Remove yourself so that oh, there could be okay. another another vote in June. Ah, uh, so it'd just be like a decision. Not even. Okay, I see. I I I would agree with Kayla. The yeah. uh, the rules don't provide for anyone to require officers to remove themselves, but all four officers could choose to do so, um, mm -hmm. and that would trigger a new election of all four. Okay, but previously I heard that the only reason somebody wouldn't be in offices any, anymore or in the um, executive team anymore is if they were no longer on the commission. But are you saying that there is an option to remove yourself from office without having to leave the commission? 
an officer could simply choose to resign from the position. Yeah. There's nothing that would prevent them from doing so. Right? Yeah. The rules wouldn't remove that. But the officer could choose to step down of their own accord. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Lord. Um, I mean, I understand that someone could step down or resign. I guess I would just make the comment that it seems like it would be very disruptive and not necessarily helpful in the spirit of getting things accomplished because of just the time it takes to kind of ramp up on an initiative and, you know, work with others. It doesn't seem very productive to be replacing officers after just a few months. Thank you for that, Commissioner Lauren. Do we have any other comments or questions from the commission? I think the next item on our agenda is the election. So um, we can move on to that. So next is the election of the Civil Rights Commission officers. Um, or sorry, seeing no further questions, I will direct the clerk to file and receive that report, please. Um, and then next on the agenda, we have the election of the Civil Rights Commission officers, chair, vice chair, secretary, and treasurer. In accordance with the commission's election procedures, this office is for un an unexpired one-year term. Nominations can be made by any commissioner present at the meeting and do not require a second. After nominations are closed, candidates will be given a maximum of three minutes to speak um, to why they would like to be considered for the position. After all, candidates have completed their after all candidates have completed their speeches, a question and answer period by commissioners will be held for a maximum time limit of five minutes. The Q and A period shall involve all candidates, including concluding with a vote in the order the candidates were nominated. Are there any questions about the process as I've explained it? Okay, and so I will open the floor for nominations. Um, are there any nominations for the position of chair? We'll begin with. Um, I nominate Mackenzie Colas. Second. Okay, any other nominations? Thank you both. I would nominate Cindy Lord. Um, this is Commissioner Lord. Um, I need to demure the nomination, but I do appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, Commissioner Lord. Do we have any other nominations for the position of chair? I'll give this a minute. I didn't realize I said give like two minutes, so I'll give another minute. A few seconds. Okay, seeing no other nominations, um, the nomination period is now closed. Um, next. I, I'm sorry, Mackenzie, I oh, missed yes, it. Um, please. Um, I okay. my phone was not working. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. What was the nominations for? This is the nomination for the position of chair. And no one has been nominated? nominated? Commissioner Colas, my, I mean, May, myself. Oh my gosh. Um, oh, I second that nomination. Oh, you, okay, thank you. So it says next each, um, or, Next, each candidate will be recognized in order to speak for a period of two minutes. Um, so I will say thank you everyone for, or thank you for the few seconds that I got um, on the nomination uh, to be chair again. Um, 
I really, I do look forward to a new year with us and a new um, set of commissions and maybe some, um, I don't know if we have the power to change any of the statute that um, Miss Andrea mentioned earlier with like the um, sta uh, statute that just determines whether or not um, commissioners are on for one year or if they can, you know, start a new term. I don't know if that's something that's changeable, but I would love to be able to see what other um, rules that we can improve for the betterment of the commission. I know last year we did um, some changes around um, absences to help find some clarity and things. So I look forward to things like that as well, um, but also really looking forward to new commissioners and just finding some more energy. I know we have some things going on around housing and then, you know, we want to maintain that with the work group. So hopefully we have other commissioners um, present today that are uh, interested in getting um, involved in some more of that work and then also just excited for the process to come for the subcommittees and what we can do moving forward. I am not sure if we'll be doing new subcommittees, so I'll have to ask um, Kayla that, but yeah. So I'll open the floor for Q&A if anyone has any questions for me, but I will, um, I'll accept the nomination because yeah, Commissioner Burke rest. I'm just wondering, and this will be a question for all of the candidates for all of the positions, um, what your response is to the proposal that Commissioner Cobia floated about everyone stepping down from their positions and to give the new commissioners a chance to vote in June, presumably. Yeah, thank you for that question because I wanted to talk about that, but then I was like, wasn't sure. So just based off of comments that happened, and so I was like going to leave it open. But as far as that, I um, really, with this being the rule that we have to follow, I'm really, I would look forward to seeing um, any new commissioners that might have interest in joining our team and really um, finding that um, new eyes and new energy um, for the commission. So I would be open to um, agreeing to step down when new commissioners are present so that we can do a, a, a vote that would be fair for all the commissioners that will be on the commission that, at that time. Thanks, Commissioner Bergquist. Okay, so um, seeing no other questions, um, we will proceed to the election of the commission chair. A majority vote is required to elect an officer. Sorry, Chair May. Um, yeah, Commissioner Shepard has oh. her hand up. Yes, Commissioner Shepard, please. Thank you. Um, I am one of the commissioners that has agreed to stay on during this time. Thank and you so much. for me, it's very important. Yes, of course, it's very important to use this time wisely and to work mm -hmm. hard during this time. So I guess, what are you going to do as the chair to ensure we use this time wisely and we hit the ground running? Absolutely. Thanks, Commissioner Shepard. I think as chair, just starting this new year, one thing that um, I was really excited by was all of the work that some of our commissioners were doing on the subcommittees. Well, all of our commissioners were doing on the subcommittees um, and very specifically just like community engagement and research in their subcommittee. And so really figuring out how we can get more of our commissioners actually involved in some of that, that really the work that we're all committed to doing in the commission, um, I think really all centers that community engagement, right? Like Kayla asked us, how can we get more commissioners? It really takes all of us. So, you know, that's something that Kayla and I spoke about last year too, was, you know, and, and you know, we were hoping that we could be in person more and things and, and weren't able to as much, but um, with as far as outreach for our commissioners to, to knowing we had new, um, recruitment that we needed to do. Um, and so just, I think, getting more of our commissioners involved in that community aspect to the work that we're doing um, and, and just having, I think, a little bit more, um, I think, involvement in, in some of the meetings with the, um, I think, Standards and Procedures Committee and, and things as such, just wanting to make sure I support those committees as well. I know there was a lot of meetings scheduled last year where we were able to meet with folks from the city, um, looking at data, looking at um, preventing crime and things as such. So I'll continue to support each of the commissioners and in their goals as well as we reach to um, schedule meetings and um, get people on our schedule and continue to just really promote um, 
what civil rights looks like in the city of Minneapolis. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Shepard. Uh, okay, so seeing no other questions, um, uh, we will proceed with the election of the commission chair. A majority vote is required to elect an officer. Um, clerk, uh, can I please? Can you please call the roll on the nomination of um, Commissioner May? Commissioner Bergquist. Yes. Commissioner Cobia. Yes. Commissioner Crowder. Yep. Commissioner Davis. Commissioner Devonish. Yes. Commissioner Fine. Yes. Commissioner Folk. Yes. Commissioner Hartz. Yes. Commissioner Herkman. Yes. Commissioner Lord. Yes. Commissioner Rance. Yes. Commissioner Shepard. Yes. Commissioner Stignani. Yes. <clears throat> Commissioner May. Yes. Um, is Commissioner Davis there? You have 13 eyes. Um, thank you. So that motion passes and um, myself, Chair May, uh, will continue to be the elected chair. So thank you everybody for, um, thank you for that. I look forward to it. Um, and so now I will open the floor for nominations um, in the position of the vice chair. Do we have any nomination nominations? I would nominate Jeff Cobia. Second. Commissioner Lord. Uh, I would nominate Commissioner Devinish. I second that. Any other nominations for the position of vice chair? Okay, so seeing um, the nomination period is now closed. I hope that was enough time for everybody. Um, next, each candidate will be recognized in order to speak for a period of two minutes. Um, and I will now open the floor for a brief. Oh, wait. Mm, sorry, skip a step. So I will have Commissioner Cobia. Um, you can take two minutes to tell us. A little bit about what your position as vice chair would be like. Cool. Thank you for uh, the nominations. I uh, appreciate your support and take it as a, a compliment that I haven't uh, ruined the office of secretary yet. Um, I would say I, I, I think there's a pretty big priority. It sounds like with the scheduling of um, these panels, these open panels this year. So you know, I, I I'm. Would like to continue. Uh, I, I see. I have seen my role in the past as being a, a support of the commission role, so that others can take the the out front leadership positions and and just being able to try to facilitate what the commission needs to do on its own in order to function in the you know in our community. So I think the vice chair is is a strong role for that. Supporting Chair May. Um, you know, I, I enjoyed working with Chair May last year as secretary on the executive board and before that as the head of the um, the subcommittee. And so, you know, I, I also think that, um, you know, I have some ideas for streamlining how the panels get uh, distributed and how we communicate about them, especially uh, with attorneys who may have conflicts and just getting that information out a little quicker and managing it a little um, more 
uh, in a focused way, and especially with, like I said, these public panels. I also think it would be helpful uh, if we're talking about, you know, potentially changing or, or arguing. I know we have a few things on the menu for potentially changing or, or trying to uh, talk to the city or, or the state about changing some ordinances. It may help to have uh, an attorney in the vice chair um, position in order to facilitate those conversations from, you know, the attorney point of view uh, with the statutes and being able to, to sort of translate that stuff um, into, into layman's terms. So um, I'm happy to serve. I think can't go wrong with me or Commissioner Devinish, but um, yeah, I will eat the floor. Thanks, Commissioner Cobia. Commissioner Devinish, um, you may not have two minutes to um, Tell us a little bit about yourself and your role as um, vice chair, if you had that. Good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Lowell, for nominating. Appreciate it. Um, I'm excited about 22. Hopefully, kind of uh, apprehensive about. Cindy, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Oh, that's much better. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm I'm sorry. Um, so I'm just excited for the year 2022. I'm hoping that with some new energy, we can complete more work in the community. Last year, we did a lot of work with Stop the Gun Violence Act, um, uh, resolution and proclamation. Also with African American Family Preservation Act, I really would like to move forward in those two key areas that uh, I helped lead along with the help of um, really um, Commissioner Hertz was such a great asset, um, Commissioner um, Rance and a, a few other just great um, helpers in, in completing those tasks. So um, I thank um, everyone on this commission for their great work and I'm just excited to move forward in our work in community engagement and, and the front lines. Um, last year, we did the Juneteenth event. Um, we had um, Commissioner Gold um, and a few other commissioners stop by uh, for Juneteenth. We would like to work on that again separately and hopefully uh, again have the support from the city of Minneapolis, which they um, donated to and helped support. So uh, thank you. We uh, continue to hand out uh, face masks in the community, boots on the ground, meeting people where they are. Um, when I first started the Stop the Gun Violence um, Act resolution, I was going to Shiloh Temple, Cub Foods, everywhere in North Minneapolis, trying to get people to sign the, the petition, and then it turned into the resolution. So thank you again, everyone, for your ongoing support. It's truly an honor, and I'm just excited for the work that we can do. Thanks, Commissioner Devins. Um, so I will now open the floor for a brief Q&A so that commissioners may engage with the candidates. And I see um, Commissioner Birdquest has uh, our first question. Same question as before. What are your thoughts about the proposal to step down so that the incoming commissioners can have a chance to vote on the leadership? Um, do we want to just go in order for Commissioner Cobia? Yeah, so I suggested it. So I, I think it's a good idea. Oh, yeah. um, just, just to address what um, Commissioner Lord brought up, uh, you know, I, I we took over halfway through last year, there was some changes. I took over a position and I mean, it wasn't it wasn't a big transition. I think maybe chair might be something that we should consider not having the chair step down, especially if we don't have other nominations, but the other positions, I don't see a reason why it wouldn't be okay to do. Commissioner Devinis, what are your thoughts? Oh, thank you. Um, I support the idea and the reason in any capacity uh, um, based on a person's interaction and involvement with the commission. Uh, for me, it's based on how involved they are and how passionate they are and um, their vision. Uh, if someone is willing to accept the role of 
chair and vice chair, secretary, treasurer, and all of its duties, and they're willing to take on that capacity um, and are able to give their time um, and devotion of that, I, I support that. Do we have any other questions for the vice chair? Okay. I'll, I'll just say this, Crowder. I think you guys are both great. Um, this this is going to be a very difficult decision for us all, but it's it's good to have people who are as passionate as you all are. So good good things. I second that. Absolutely. Definitely. Definitely. Well, here comes the hard part, right? So we will proceed um, with the election. Oh wait, yep, for the com commission vice chair and the majority vote is required to elect an officer. Um, so clerk, can you please call the roll on the nomination of Commissioner Cobia? Commissioner Bergquist? Yes. Cobia? Commissioner Cobia, yes. Yeah. It, it, was, it, was, it was, the way it was called was voting on Commissioner Cobia's appointment. So yes, and yes for Commissioner Cobia. It, it wasn't clear to me whether we were supposed to vote for one or the other, or whether we're just doing straight the Cobia vote and then the Devonish vote. So perhaps the chair can clarify. Yeah, so what I was, I asked the clerk to call the role on the mo motion for, or the role on the nomination of Cobia. So we will be doing an election of Commissioner Cobia. And um, I think we did this last year too. And then um, the nominate, do we need to call the role? Um, and uh, commission or Miss Andrea, would you be able to clarify if we would need to if we like how how it works? We do both, and then you just tally up how many yay for each name. Or I thank you, Chair May. Uh, I would recommend that you call the roll on the nomination of Commissioner Cobia, and if he obtains a majority vote, yeah. then. Uh, would be elected. If he did not obtain a majority vote, then you would call the roll on the second nomination who would presumably obtain the majority vote. Thank you for clarifying that. Does that clarify things for everybody? Okay, so um, again, sorry, uh, we will have the, so we have uh, clerks already calling the roll. Commissioner Bergquist, you said, um, Yay for Commissioner Cobia. That's correct. Thank you. Commissioner Cobia. Yes. Crowder. Yes. Davis. Yes. Devinish. Fine. Vote no so all thing. What was that? I'm sorry. Fine. I'm I'm not voting no. I'm just abstain. Abstain. Okay. Full. Abstain. I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. Um. Abstain. Hearts? Abstain. Okay. Thank you. Hearts. Uh. Uh, no. Erkman? Yes. Lord? No. Grants? No. Shepherd? Yes. Stignani? No. Uh, May? Abstain. We have seven ayes. Did um, Commissioner Devinish, did you vote or no? Um, we have seven, <coughs> we have seven ayes. I don't believe Commissioner Devinish did vote. No, yeah. I did not. Okay. 
Um, I don't. So you do not want to cause. I don't want to cause contention amongst the group, so I'll withdraw my name. Abstain is on screen. Thank you. Okay, so that there were seven eyes. You said. Yes. Okay. So we will do the um, roll on the nomination of Commissioner Devinish. Uh, Commissioner Bergquist. Yeah, as a point of order, it's, it seems as though Commissioner Devinish withdrew her name from consideration. So there's only one candidate now. I thought we were referring to her vote for Commissioner Cobia because she hadn't voted for Commissioner Cobia yet. But Commissioner. So uh, Wait, Devin, just can you clarify? clarify? We still haven't done your election yet, so. Um, so I'm confused. So is that just for to nominate him or are you saying you acknowledge him as a participant? So I'll explain. So Commissioner Cobia has been nominated as vice chair and he received seven votes um, for I. Um, a few no's and a few abstains and so now it and that's why we were asking if you what was your vote for him um but it sounded like i i'm not sure if you had a vote for him but additionally now we can do your nomination and do your vote there's no okay. like you still have an opportunity because there's right or no is that wrong do we not have seven more or eight more people it would then be a tie it would be a tie, yeah. So I mean, we still should be doing the or commissioner. Sorry, I keep saying commissioner. Miss uh, Andrea, can you? I, I'm not certain how many commissioners are present tonight, but the election does have to be by a simple majority of the commissioners who are present and voting. If we commissioners who abstain are not voting, so I think we may want to clarify. Okay. <laughs> um, it, it, commissioners who abstain have to be uh, removed from the count of who's voting. And then the majority has to be calculated from that. I'm not certain whether this is entirely uh, clear to all of the commissioners. Okay. Yeah. Is there... Does that make sense? Okay. <laughs> Do people so need just just to clarify, if there are 14 commissioners and three of them abstain in a vote, then there would only be 11 commissioners that would be that would determine the vote, and a majority of six would be sufficient. Is that correct? That is correct. You would take the total number of commissioners present, subtra subtract those who have abstained from voting, mm -hmm. and then determine who received the majority of the vote. And how many commissioners do we have here with us tonight? I would defer to Diana to tell yeah. us that. Thank yeah, you. you would then be working with the number of 11. Of and 11. You have seven, yes, and then you have seven uh, votes for Commissioner Cobia. So he would then have the majority. Well, and it looks you know, like I Commissioner feel Shoemaker has just joined us. Sorry to interrupt. Oh, that's great. I don't know if she was considered in the totals. Well, good evening, everyone. No, because I think she's just joining. But I, I don't know if this can be changed. But I guess I abstained, not knowing that it was going to reduce our total count and make it more of a majority. So I mean, does that matter? Because I made the mistake and it's over with. <laughs> That's my apologies. Can we have clarity on that? Because I would say no then versus abstaining. But I mean, yeah, I would say I. In that same boat as well. This is. I, I'm not sure that the rules exactly address. I'm sorry. This is Andrea Neff speaking. The rules don't address a situation where we've just had general confusion. <laughs> um, it, you know, in this situation, if the entire commission wanted to say, let's scrap that vote and try again, I think the commission by consensus could do that. Um, but that would be a, a decision of the whole commission. Um, to to begin again, not something that one person would decide on their own. OK, so we couldn't just say um, Commissioner Folk and I actually wanted to say no instead of abstain because of confusion with the rules. I would say that the proper thing to do in this situation would be for the commission to vote to do it again. 
rather than just to have people yeah. change their minds. <laughs> and then we have um, Commissioner Herkman and Commissioner Fine have questions. So Commissioner Herkman, you want to? Yeah, I, I was just going to agree with the general confusion, and um, I would suggest that and uh, that we do a complete revolt with uh, the new information on the table. Proud and a new commissioner present as well. It sounds like. Okay, so we will try this again. My apologies, everybody. Um, so, um, but again, we will. Please, clerk, call, please call the roll on the nomination of Commissioner Cobia. Just as a point of order, I think we need to vote on the proposal to revote to scrap the vote that we just had. And then if that vote goes forward, then we would revote. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry, this is technical, but I think that's kind of what the city attorney's office yeah. said that what Andrea Neff was saying we have to do. Okay. Thank you for clarifying. OK, I, I well, do think I, that's I, the yeah. cleanest way, yes. Okay, and then sorry, Commissioner Fine, your name, your hand is up too. I apologize. Uh, I was going to suggest that the chair make a ruling, and the only motion that needs to be done is to whether to rule the chair. But the chair could say because of confusion that we're going to hold a second vote and understand that a, an abstention is not a no vote. I thought we were just voting for a yay vote. <clears throat> so I would suggest that the chair the rule that we we're going to have another vote that there wasn't, it wasn't clear the result from that vote. And if someone wants to make a motion to overrule the chair, they can do that. Okay. Yeah, well, I will um, state that we shall um, do the vote again, um, but is there any concern about that. OK, thank you. So we will go forward with the um, first nomination. So I'll have the clerk please call the roll on the nomination of Commissioner Colby. Yeah, please. Thank you. Commissioner Bergquist. Yes. Commissioner Colby. Yes. Commissioner Crowder. Yeah. Commissioner Davis. Yes. Commissioner Devonish. No. Commissioner Fine. No. Commissioner Folk. No. Commissioner Hartz. No. Nope. Commissioner Herkman? No. Commissioner Lord? No. I can't hear you, I'm sorry. No. Commissioner Rance? I'm sorry, can you just repeat what we're voting on again? I'm Thank you, Commissioner Rance. So we are voting, um, doing, re we are redoing the vote for the candidate, um, Commissioner Cobia, just due to confusion about the, what the. Okay. Yes. That's a yes vote. Commissioner Shepard. Yes. Commissioner Stignani. No. Commissioner May. No. Shoemake? No. Um, okay. You have six eyes. Thank you. And so now we'll move to the nomination. Um, we'll have the clerk call the role in the nomination for Commissioner Devonish for the role of vice chair. Commissioner Bergquist. Yes. I don't call. Oh, did I not say Commissioner Devonish? Yes, you did, but I'm confused. I don't call the people I've already called. Is that correct? You, <laughs> that you voted do. yes. Or? You call everybody or no? I that, guess that, that uh, 
Andrea Neff can clarify, but I think the first vote did not receive a majority. And so now we just do another vote on the next candidate and see if that candidate gets a majority. Mm -hmm. I think the slate is wiped clean. Call everybody because I'm I'm going to change my vote here to yes because we we need a we need a vice. Commissioner Bergquist. Yes. Commissioner Cobia. Yes. Commissioner Crowder. Yep. Commissioner Davis. Yes. Commissioner Devinish. This is for voting for Commissioner Devinish, correct? Yes. Okay, yes. Commissioner Fine. Yes. Commissioner Folk. Yes. Commissioner Hartz. Yes. Commissioner Herkman. Yes. Commissioner Lord. Yes. Commissioner Rance. Yes. Commissioner Shepard. Yes. Commissioner Stignani. Yes. Commissioner May. Yes. Commissioner Shoemake. Yes. You have 15 eyes. Okay, so um, with that, the motion passes and Commissioner Devinish has been elected as vice chair. Congratulations. Um, Thank you. Thank you all for your support. Thanks for the, everybody for being patient with the process. Um, <laughs> Uh, let's see. And so I will open the floor now for nominations of the position of secretary. I nominate Cobia. I second. I decline. I mean, thank you, but. Oh, thanks. And, and I nominate Shoemake. I'll second that. I'll oblige. Do we have any further nominations for the position of secretary? I'll nominate Commissioner Davis. Thank you. So let's see. All right. And Commissioner Cobia, he made a comment in the chat if anyone wants to check it out. Um, but are there any further nominations? But um, seeing none, I'll at, uh, close the nomination period. And next, I'll just have each candidate uh, have their two minutes to speak. And this will be in the order in which they were um, no, um, nominated. So we'll have Commissioner Shoemake go first, please. Good evening, everyone. Sorry, my lighting is kind of weird. Um, all right, secretary is not something that I necessarily would love to do, but um, I would be happy to do it for the commission. I enjoyed the um, the panel organizing work last year and would love to continue doing that in whatever capacity you guys would want me to support that. So um, I can type fast. I'll connect with Jeff on what to do, but I'm also open to giving someone else a new opportunity. That's all I would have to say. Thanks, Commissioner Shermick. Um, Commissioner Davis. Hello, thank you for the nomination as well. I actually am contemplating staying on, but at this point I had not. Um, I just recently bought a moving company with my real estate career, so I've been kind of busy, but um, oh. I guess I would be honored to do such a thing as well. So if nobody else wants to, I would take on the challenge, definitely. Because I love being a part of the commission, 
and that would make it a priority, definitely. Thank you, Commissioner Davis. Oh, yay. OK, I was hoping, you know, Commissioner Burquist would ask. And now I get to because I think Commissioner Shoemake missed our whole discussion, so I'll give a little bit more explanation for my question yeah. that I've posed to every candidate so far. Um, so by way of background and apologies to the commissioners for whom this is already old news, um, some commissioners who are here today voting will not be on the commission come June because the department is going through the process of recruiting and interviewing candidates to fill the positions that would have been empty as of the end of 2021. So there was a discussion about, you know, what we're doing right now, electing leadership. Um, the, the new commissioners who come on to the commission in June won't have had the chance to play any role in selecting that leadership. And some, some people express some concern about the fairness of that. We, we like to encourage new commissioners to run for leadership positions, et cetera, and they would effectively be blocked from that opportunity based on our actions here tonight. Were it not for a proposal by one of the commissioners um, that the and we, we sort of worked through the logistics of this, that the executive team that's elected tonight could agree that they won't they, they will step down from their positions effective for the June meeting so that we can have a sort of a revote. We can reelect a, a leadership team. It could be the same leadership. It could be new le leadership with the input of the incoming commissioners that have not yet been appointed to the commission. So um, and not everyone is in agreement with that. You know, the, there's a counter argument that there should be some continuity throughout the course of the year. It could be disruptive to have new leadership in the middle of the year. Maybe the um, chair shouldn't be stepping down and other positions could. But for purposes of, of this discussion, I want to ask both candidates what you think of this proposal. Like, would you be willing to um, step down from your position in June to allow in the June meeting, you, you could rerun but to allow the new commissioners to have a chance to have a say in the leadership team of the commission for the remainder of the year. Sorry for that very long winded question. I would be happy to step down if that's what we came to with consensus. Um, I don't really have a strong opinion on it as you were kind of laying out your question. I just thought about my first year as a commissioner and I had no idea who to vote for, <laughs> you know, like there was, you're kind of, I feel like you're pretty new uh, and not really knowing all the dynamics of everyone. And so I came in and with the leadership that was chosen, like uh, I did not know what I was getting into with them, but that's kind of just a part of joining a commission. And if you come in halfway and there's already leadership there, I don't know. Do we need, if we have more important things to focus on, do we want to spend time doing an election? But I am totally open to it. Um, I have nothing against that. Thanks, Michelle. I actually absolutely agree with that being that it was my first year too. I mean, I'd be open if that be the case, but um, whatever works best for the commission and is in the best interest of the commission, just like Commissioner Shoemake said, you know, it's, if there might be other topics that are a little bit more important, but it depends on, you know, how things are going and whatnot, definitely. Thank you. Do we have any other questions from the commissioners? Okay, so seeing none, we will proceed with the election for the commission secretary. A majority vote is required to elect an officer. And so, Clerk, will you please call the roll on the motion of Commissioner Shoemake? Commissioner Bergquist? Yes. yes. Commissioner Cobia? No. Commissioner Crowder? Yeah. Commissioner Davis? Yes. Devonish? Commissioner Devonish? Yes. Commissioner Fine? No. Commissioner Folk? <clears throat> yes. 
Commissioner Hartz? Yes. Commissioner Herkman? Yes. yes. Commissioner Lord? No. Commissioner Rance? Yes. Commissioner Shepard? Yes. Commissioner Stignani? Yes. Commissioner Shoemake? No. Commissioner May? Yes. We have 10 ayes. Thank you. Um, so with that, um, motion passes and Commissioner Shoemake has been elected as secretary. Congratulations. So I will now open the floor for nominations of the position of treasurer. This is Commissioner um, Devnish. I um, nominate Commissioner Folk. Crowd of seconds. Commissioner Lord. Uh, I nominate Commissioner Rance. This is Commissioner Folk. Um, yes, Commissioner Sorry, Folk? just a question. Yes, yeah, sorry. <clears throat> just, just wanted to make sure this is for treasure or I yes. think I missed. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, is there, is there, I apologize, but is there a way to like, I just um, better define like the specific role of this um, particular executive um, position? I think personally, I would, I would be more willing to maybe abstain from it, just knowing that there's other uh, commissioners that are also being nominated that I think are qualified for the role. Um, Mm hmm. Yeah, well. Let's see, I was just looking at an internal operating procedures, but I guess um, can our last year's chair, I mean, um, secretary talk a little bit about your duties. Um, is that possible? Treasure. Yes. Oh, it's treasure. Treasure. Um, uh, Y'all getting that repeat? Not okay, anymore. Away. Um, basically, I did almost nothing. And, <laughs> and part of that was we wanted to free up some money based on the stuff we get and wanted to defer that back into the pot. Couldn't do it. There was a lot of regs that are basically applied that we couldn't change because they're from the city. And um, one of the things I didn't do but should have done was drum up more ideas from people to where to put the money. And that's where Commissioner Devinish was an all star. Wow was coming up with ideas on where to donate the money. So I think the the main thing our treasurer should be doing this year is identifying places to put our money. I don't think we spent our whole budget last year um, of 3,000 some odd dollars. Great, and I think um, Commissioner Rance was also nominated for this position. And I, um, if he is willing to accept that nomination, I would just throw my support behind him um, and abstain this position. Commissioner Rance humbly declines, but thank you. I nominate Commissioner Devon. I mean, not Devon, Jeez, Louise Davis. I don't want two jobs. No, not you. I'm sorry. You're right. That's a lot. Do we need a second for that? I don't think we do, but I second it. Okay. Um, do we have any other nominations? So, seeing none, I will now close the nomination period and ask each candidate to um, have two minutes to speak. Oh, wait, no. Wait, Commissioner, uh, Commissioner Folk, are you still wanting to be a nomination? No, I I was um, um, abstaining from that, yeah. Okay, because Rance abstained, so you were like, if Commissioner Rance doesn't, 
So I'm like, what? All right. So we have for nominations, we have Commissioner Davis. And so Commissioner Davis um, just had a moment to speak. But do you have anything else that you wanted to say? Um, if not, I will. I have a nomination. Oh, OK. I closed Sorry. the period for nominations. Um, already. But never mind. Sorry, I don't know. Does that. Is there legality to that? Am I getting in trouble for opening? I okay. suppose technically you could vote to reopen the nominations. <laughs> yeah. You're funny. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so. So we'll continue moving forward. And. Um, if Commissioner Davis does want to speak again, please let me know. Otherwise, um, we'll open the floor for Q&A if any commissioners do have Q&A for the position of treasurer. I have kind of the same type of thing. So whatever, I'd be available to help definitely. So just um, any questions anybody might have. Great. Well, I think we can proceed with the election of the commission treasurer and a majority vote is required to elect. Um, so clerk, can you please call the roll on the name, nomination of Commissioner Davis? Commissioner Bergquist? Yes. Commissioner Cobia? Yes. Commissioner Crowder? Yep. Commissioner Davis? Yes. Commissioner Devinish? <clears throat> yes. Commissioner Fine? Yes. Commissioner Folk? Yes. Commissioner Hartz? Abstain. Commissioner Herkman? Yes. Commissioner Lord? Yes. Commissioner Rance? Yes. Commissioner Shepard? Yes. Commissioner Stignani? Yes. Commissioner Shoemake? Yes. Commissioner May? Yes. We have 14 ayes. Great. Um, so that motion passes and Commissioner Davis has D Davis has been elected as the treasurer. Congratulations and thank you to all the commissioners that um, participated in the election and congratulations to all the newly elected um, executive team. I look forward to working with you um, throughout this year. So we'll move on to um, the new business. Is there any new business that should come before the commission? Yes. Um, um, this is, oh, sorry. Commissioner Rance and then Commissioner Devinish. Yeah, I just had a new business in regards to some sort of remedy where we can speed through the voting. Um, um, and, and maybe there's a way in which if we are voting on the agenda and accepting the minutes, that we can all do it under one vote so we can have more time to, to get down to the business at hand for our, for our future meetings. And moving forward, if we can vote in alphabetical order so that we are more prepared to to vote and we did it this time but in meetings prior to it's been so random and very um uh, uh, very frustrating so that's the that's my recommendation for moving forward thank you for the recommendations is that are those things that you know we'll be able to take into consideration when it comes to um the work that we do with the city and um working with you diana in the clerk's office um, is it is that something that would be we'd be able to to work on is streamlining some parts of our meeting in that way 
Yes. Chairman Andrea has her hand up. Yes. Yes, Chair May um, and commissioners. Uh, I hope everyone can hear me. I've got some funny sound going on, so I apologize. Uh, as far as uh, the time required to vote on items, unfortunately in this virtual format, it is required that we do the individual voice votes. That wouldn't continue in an in-person format. Um, we could return to a all in favor say aye approach um, in an in-person format. Uh, in, in terms of uh, the order of voting, um, I have uh, no concerns or, or uh, preferences about that, uh, but that would be up to the, the yeah. clerk to determine the proper um, method of calling the roll. Yeah, absolutely. Diana, is that something that you'd be able to comment on if possible? Or maybe um, we can discuss that. I, I agree. I I would like, you know, sometimes I never know whose name is going to get called first, which isn't a problem, but um, it would be nice to, if possible, probably easier for, for everyone as well to um, know who we're doing roll call on as well. They are alphabetical. Um, they okay. have been the last uh, few meetings, except for Commissioner Shoemake and May, which were at the end because you were vice chair and chair respectively. But I can put you up. I mean, it, it's easy to do it alphabetical. It's it's pretty yeah. much done. So, I mean, I've always either been first or last, so I don't I don't mind. But um, I think if, if you have a a structure that you're using moving forward. I think that I think that's been working, possibly. I think so. I think the last few meetings it hasn't been as or seemed as random, but maybe it's just a matter of when it seems like that because I've been called first or last, so it might just start old folks. Um, but thanks for those comments. I think um, we'll need more like that, more more things that we can figure out that I know a lot of people have questions and um, a lot of discussion doesn't get to happen. And so it's nice when when people bring things up that are on their mind. Um, but was there and then there was one more. Uh, Attorney Nick. Neff has her hand up. As well as it. Uh, I apologize. Back. I forgot to lower it. That's, right, that's OK. Way. I just did that for you. But then, yes, we had Commissioner Bergquist. Um, is this an appropriate time to discuss other new business or are we still yeah. on the previous? OK, um, and I do want to note in the agenda, there was also a point that I think we skipped over on subcommittee logistics. I don't know if that was intentional or if we should revisit that after we cover the new business. Um, just the agenda I'm looking at had an item six yeah. subcommittee logistics. You um, know, and my, my, I'm looking at my script and it, it doesn't. So my apologies. Okay. I will. Um, circle back to that. All right, but I do have something on new business that I just wanted to mention. Um, the United States has ratified a treaty called the International Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination. And because we've ratified that treaty, we go through a periodic reporting process with the treaty body experts. And that um, reporting process is going to happen in Geneva this August. So if the if the commission is interested, I'd be happy to provide more information at another meeting about what that process is, where we are in the process, and how the commission might want to get involved. I don't want to take up that time today, but I'll just sort of put that out there if, you know, if the executive team wants to put it on an agenda or if, there, if there's interest in general in the part of the commission, I'd be happy to, to provide more information about that and we could think about whether we want to get involved in the process. Great, thank you for staying um, up to date on that and, and providing us with some more information. It's nice to see what things are happening with that progress. OK. So seeing other, no other hands raised, um, I will circle back to item six on the agenda, which is the subcommittee logistics. Um, give me one second. Okay. And Chair May, I can need logistics. Yeah, I'm like, oh. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, so I'm just jumping in. I think we just put this on the agenda to address the subcommittees and whether they would continue functioning and whether they would keep the same membership. Um, and Andrea, maybe you can speak to if that's something that Mackenzie can or sorry, Chair May can do as she stays on as chair. She can just assign um, subcommittee membership rights so we don't need to vote on anything. 
I think she left the, the video up. I am I, almost positive that's the case since normally that's what um, the chair is able to just assign subcommittee members. Oh, and Andrea is back and her hand is up. Okay. I am here. I do apologize. I'm not sure my technology is doing great tonight. Uh, yes, the chair does appoint the members of the subcommittees. So um, um, while the rules say that the members should express an interest in their subcommittees, we have all done that since there are, are no new members and um, the chair could determine that she'll just appoint all of the same people to the same committees. Thank you. So Does this that would answer be the, the question? I, I, I'm not 100% sure I answered your question. I apologize. I think you did, unless, Jeremy, you have other thoughts. I, I think that I think, Yeah, I think the idea was just that if you wanted to decide to do that and announce that at this meeting, then the subcommittees could proceed kind of as planned from today yeah. on versus holding off for another month. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, Oh, because I would have to do that at this meeting. I couldn't send like an email after the meeting. Because I would either, um, I guess my first thought is to keep things the way they are, um, unless anybody has any um, concern. I do want to look at the numbers um, to see who is in each of the subcommittees. So if I can have time to do that um, and then just let commissioners know. Or does that need to happen at a? You're saying that needs to happen at a meeting. Andrea, I, I, I do advise that that should happen okay. at a meeting. Uh, group emails um, create open meeting law concerns because it amounts to conducting business yeah. outside of the public view. Is that the only concern? Because I I find with BCCing, and I don't think that that will cause a that same issue. I, I'm not quite. If you wish to, like blindly see people to a subcommittee that's that's conducting business. Oh, I see. What you're and saying. I would always advise that business should always be conducted in public view. Okay. Thank you. I thought you were referring to the email. Okay. So, um, well, can I? I'd like to keep the commission subcommittees the same, but I do want to know um, what that membership looks like. So. Can I have the chairs just let me know how many if you feel like your commission has an, um, a full participation? Because I know a lot has changed in the last year since the subcommittees formed. Is that something we could do in the next two, three minutes, two minutes? Oh, um, sorry, Mc Mackenzie, this I see multiple, so. Um. Yeah, Com Commissioner Devinish, please. I'm sorry. Um, so our chair was Chair Gold, who is no longer a part of the commission. And um, oh, you're right. Yes. Um, Commissioner Folk, I guess, uh, stepped in as chair. It was just um, her, myself, and um, Herkman. Uh, but I would like to ask um, Keila um, and um, the next steps for bringing back the Stop the Gun Violence Act at, uh, at resolution and proclamation. As you know, the gun violence continues to escalate. And um, last we heard from the mayor or the mayor's office was that because he's running for a reelection, um, that he could not give us another year of Stop the Gun Violence Day. So touching back on what action we can take for 2022, as well as as um, African American Preservation Act, trying to move forward on, on those things. So I would like to hear from you about what, what can we do um, for that, if you want to set up a private meeting to discuss that further, and uh, I want to be sensitive of, 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 of people's time as well. Yeah, that would be great if the two of you would be able to connect, or not even just the two, I would be happy to be there as well, um, but that we can connect after the meeting so that we can um, just get a few more logistics regarding the subcommittees. Um, I see Commissioner Folk's hand is up as well. 
Yeah, I was just going to comment on your question around the subcommittee and just was going to note what Commissioner Devinish already said about how our chair had left yep. um, mm -hmm. our subcommittee. And I believe it was, yeah, it was Commissioner Devinish, Commissioner Davis, and Commissioner Berkman and I. But if, yeah, if, because we did lose one person, including who was the chair, just chair wondering if we if could add more people to the subcommittee yeah. or just. So I, apologize. I didn't realize that a new election hadn't occurred for the chair for that. And then, so I guess my question is, I know we just discussed this, but I'm like, we're going to be doing, we're going to be having new commissioners in June and I will be putting them into sub, how is the subcommittee, how are we doing the logistics for our new commissioners in June? So can we keep the, do we keep the committees as is and then we're going to be forming new, new subcommittees all together with our new commission in June. Sorry. So I think, Chair May, that would kind of be up to you at the time. I think you could assign new people to the existing subcommittees and then the subcommittees could elect new chairs, you know, kind of the same way as the executive committee for the entire commission, like the chair could choose to step down at that point so that anyone could then run for chair of the subcommittee. At least that's how I would picture it happening. And then the other question would be if we had a new chair at that point, I suppose, right, they would then be able to appoint folks to subcommittees as they see fit. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank you. Commissioner Lord. Um, yeah, I, I guess I had a question on what constitutes a subcommittee just because we had in addition to the kind of three well-established subcommittees, we also kind of put together this housing equity task force. Yeah. And so I'm unclear if that would constitute kind of like an existing subcommittee to go forward. I still, I mean, I would make the case yeah. that we have lots of work to do in that area and interest in pursuing it and that we should continue with it. But, um, I'm not sure if that's kind of outside or inside the uh, this discussion of subcommittees. Yeah. Well, I know we created that so that we could continue to work on that initiative through um, to the new year. And so um, if we can keep that as a task force, I think, um, like you said, there's a lot of energy and a lot of work to be done. Um, I... Would I do see um, Miss Andrea's hand up? So I will. I'm sure oh, I've been talking way too much. Too much. No, it's I okay. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm just I hoping I catch you at the right time. The rules do the rules speak to this situation. situation. They provide that um, unless otherwise specified by the commission, a task force shall remain in existence until it completes its duties, but not for more than one year. So I don't believe you've had this task force for, for very long. Um, if it still has duties, it's it's still here. Okay, great. Yeah, it's definitely not been a year. It's been, I think we created it in the fall at some point. So um, uh, if everyone's cool with it, then we'll just we'll just keep it, uh, keep going. Thank you, Andrea. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, so at this time, um, we will be keeping the subcommittees as is with that information. Um, but I do see, oh, sorry, Commissioner Herkman. Yeah, I just wanted to, uh, my hand was up when um, Vice Chair Devinish was speaking. Uh, yeah. However we however we do this, we um, through the subcommittees or whatever, I, I just agree with her that we've, We've got to be a stronger voice on gun violence. And per what she said about Mayor Fry, I had a moment to speak with him at D Hill's funeral. And I'm guessing with the recent four murders in North, I think his tone may change. I mean, I, I don't know what his campaign yeah. tenure is, but um, I just think that regardless of what his position is, we've got to be a louder voice on that. And I would follow the lead of, um, Vice Chair Devinish and anything she wanted to do. And as long as I'm on here, uh, I think uh, Chair Folk did a great job and will continue to lead us well on our subcommittee. Uh, so thank you. Absolutely, thank you, um, Commissioner Herkman. And I absolutely love the um, 
just reiterating Commissioner Devonish's point because um, that is something we were working on a lot last year and some of our last discussions regarding gun violence really centered around um, you know the the task force that we wanted to create and pulling together a lot of these partners that are working on um, community violence gun violence prevention um, specifically even in north minneapolis and um, it didn't seem like there was a lot that a lot of traction um, that was going on and not a lot like there was even you know the task force that we talked about or not task force commission or, or body of people that were meeting regarding this topic that hadn't met in over a year and so but all the the members of that um, that Minneapolis body were um, members of these organizations, people that um, are working towards gun violence prevention and things as such. So how do we um, light some fire around some of that work? But also that was where you know we were trying to build the task force to to really bring those agencies together and see what we can actually do to really be um, a united voice and and stand against it. So I I think that that's something that. I, I'm appreciative that we have a new vice chair, um, Devinish, who has that as um, just a very strong, driven passion. So we will um, continue to figure out the best way that we can work towards that. And I think um, doing that as a commission is going to be really important. Um, Commissioner Cobia. Um, I think I'm technically on two committees. If I could just be on one, that would be super. Yeah. Cool. Well, that would be super. So, okay. I think we have to be on SMP. I can just stick with that. That would be great. Yeah, because I think that that's what the rules state. So we'll have you on SMP. Cool. Thanks. Thank you. And then Commissioner Rance. Yes, I just wanted to know um, when Commissioner Devonish meets with um, Chair May. Um, if when a report comes back to the commission, maybe some recommendations on how we can support uh, the gun violence initiative and also the African American Family Preservation Act and what more the commission can do to support yeah, um, that initiative here in um, here in Minnesota. What? Definitely. I think that's something that we could definitely talk about as a commission and what are some of the creative ways that we can move forward with those two pieces of work that were really um, fundamental last year. So um, would really appreciate any of the feedback that other commissioners have and knowing that um, just still pushing in a direction to still communicate with community partners and um, really looking forward to seeing how we can, like you said, continue to to make an impact in having meaningful conversations. And I would also Action. just say that I don't I don't see how the mayor's position should you know interfere with what the commission would like to do in regards to uh, gun violence, whether he's running for re-election or or not. And I believe June is the month for uh, national um, gun violence awareness, if I'm correct. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Hartman, you raise your hand. I just need to lower it. Oh, sorry. Um, okay, so do we have any other discussion regarding um, the subcommittee logistics um, before we move to our next item on the agenda. Actually, Chair Bay, I do have a question. So I want to go back to Commissioner Rance's um, comments in terms of one, the Stop the Gun Violence Act resolution, and two, the African American Family Preservation Act. Um, usually uh, things like this are are supported in the community engagement, but we've been doing things together as a commission asking for volunteers on specific things. So moving forward, would we create, um, I guess, a commission, a subcommittee within a subcommittee or just continue to ask for volunteers from commissioners who want to be involved in certain things like the Gun Violence Act and 
the African American Family Preservation Act? How how do we want to proceed moving forward? Yeah, great question. Always good questions, Commissioner Devinish. Um, honestly, I think that that's something that's been discussed um, quite often in the last year is how do we work within our subcommittees. I would really, honestly, I want to defer to the commission because a lot of you have been on the commission for a while and I'd love to hear what has worked in the past or maybe what hasn't worked. But, you know, we have had some a lot of success this past year in getting volunteers to participate. Um, whereas, you know, a lot of the subcommittees, I feel like, have had ownership over certain, um, you know, within like standards and, and procedures, like those folks are working specifically with internal procedures. So, you know, it is nice to have people that are working on, um, you know, S&P to be able to volunteer into some of the other work that we're doing in the commission. And it hasn't been a problem or um, it hasn't been a problem last year. It definitely wasn't. So. Um, I'd like to continue doing that if that's possible. I know um, making any more subcommittees isn't an option, nor it, um, task force as there's just been so many push, so much pushback. Not that I don't think it's um, important because I absolutely do, but that's why I think that is important that we continue to have these um, meetings regarding the gun violence and then also continue to do what we um, set out to do last year, which was really pushing the people that actually have this power to do what they're supposed to be doing as our elected officials. So um, I think that that's the, the track that we'll continue to take. Thank you. Oh, I see there's a comment, sorry. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Um, so I will move to item eight on the agenda, which is the order. Um, the next order of business is the acceptance of public comment. So I will open the floor and invite comments from the community. Um, each speaker will be allowed to speak for two minutes. Um, so with that, are there any community members still on the line that wish to address the commission? Oh, you can raise your hand or unmute. Oh, I don't see any more phone numbers on here. Okay. Oh, there is a phone number. Was that one of our commissioners ending in 92? Well, no one has um, unmuted or raised their hand yet. So with that, um, uh, thank you. Oh. And so we will move to um, the next, um, to the report from the housing equity group. Um, and so we'll just do an update on that. We I did have a first meeting. Commissioner Lord, I do see you're unmuted. Um, uh, sure, I can I can provide a brief update on that. Uh, our team, uh, our team met and uh, reviewed the um, uh, TOPA um, uh, ordinance and had some really good discussion around it. Uh, we had a lot of questions about the uh, kind of the balance of resources that it was going to require with respect to the benefits. Uh, we talked a little bit as well about um, how that a similar program is going in Washington, D.C., because they have a, a similar piece of legislation. And we also talked about the kind of the um, uh, new politics around it. Um, as three out of the four city council members who had really been championing championing this ordinance um, were voted out of office in November. So, you know, where we where we left it in terms of action steps was um, trying to get a better understanding of the degree to which this ordinance was still going to be pursued as a priority by the city council, because obviously um, if it's not being pursued, you know, we have kind of limited ability to impact it. Um, I had a follow up meeting with Emily Kosky, who's my council person, and um, she uh, uh, was also trying to kind of understand the um, uh, kind of the, the degree of interest. Um, and uh, we actually kind of owe each other uh, another follow up on that because she was going to be meeting with the uh, council person Ellison just a couple of days after we spoke. So I, I haven't gotten an update from that meeting. Um, and I think that we also, as an action step, 
you know, wanted to connect with Councilperson Ellison if possible, because he's really the remaining champion on the city council. So um, we did not in that meeting come to a firm kind of recommendation as to whether or not that was something we wanted to be supporting or not and have some outstanding questions that we're still trying to resolve. So I, so I think that's uh, uh, the best update I have. I would invite um, Bob or a chair um, or any of any of the other commissioners who were in that conversation to um, jump in and add anything I missed or any additional perspective. And based on the conversation we just had about committees, I would suggest we have a follow up meeting in the next uh, couple of weeks. I'll uh, coordinate that with um, uh, Diana. Thank you, Commissioner Lord. Chair May, is there anything you would add? Um, I, not at this moment. I uh, will look forward to an invite from um, Diana for the next meeting. I am very open, so um, looking forward to continuing to have some conversations around what we can do. I know we had some presentations that were given to our cell, uh, Commissioner Lord and I previously, and so uh, just wanted to like review that again and figure out how we can support some of that city legislation um, that is going on and and how we can, like you said, leverage um, Allison. So that would be great. And um, I know we had, a, I think it was one meeting in, was it in January? So we do have another meeting that we need to schedule. Commissioner Devinish, did you have anything? Um, I, I guess I want to maybe, oh, I'm sorry, maybe, um, in a separate discussion, we can talk about ways to actually use our funds this year. Because as you know, last year, like going back, we did not use about $3,000. So how can we best use that for our community? How can we best use that for community engagement moving forward? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know you've had some great ideas and, and done some great things in the past with the swag bags and um, being able to really do outreach to the community while also promoting the commission too. So um yeah and this this is Crowder. I on the P on the the P and G committee, I think we should take a run at maybe being able to kick our money that we receive back into that budget. I know that we ran into some roadblocks with that last year. There may be a way around it this time around, but I didn't claim that money. Mm -hmm. I know you don't claim that money. And if we're getting on a roll using our funds think we should be able to have that stuff going back into that pot but that's that's just something we can take on I think at a at either a subcommittee meeting or later down the road yeah absolutely well and and just like I guess just to throw this in this is Commissioner Lord again you know one idea I think it was Commissioner Fine who was who um had an idea about you know kind of maybe get you know, some impact or additional input from the community and holding some forums on housing equity um, and that might be a great use of of funds, trying to trying to support some dialogues around that in the community. Mm -hmm. So um, I I think that's a question for Miss Neff. Um, can we use funds to compensate community members for uh, attending community forums? If she's there. Uh, I am here, Commissioner Devinish. Thank you for your question. I my initial reaction to this is that that is probably not going to be permitted. However, um, in order to react more specifically to the proposal, I would need more details like um, what, what kind of event we're talking about and, and who we're compensating and in what amounts. Generally speaking, there's not going to be a public purpose for payments directly to a specific community member because those are um, not benefiting the community as a whole. They're benefiting primarily a single person. 
So, so yeah. I guess my question, I guess, I'm sorry. My question would be, for example, if they completed like a survey and if it's housing related, then they answer questions relating to, uh, have you experienced homelessness? Have you faced an eviction? Um, are you below a certain income? And using those, that data to support, thank you for coming to this forum to discuss your housing, um, uh, you know, uh, roadblocks that you've, that you've encountered and what can we do to overcome it? And the same with the gun violence. If you have lost a family member due to gun violence or if you became injured due to gun violence, how has that impacted your family? Um, same with the CPS, um, African American Family Preservation Act. Have you experienced um, CPS? As where you are in foster care to someone. So being specific in whatever uh, community engagement um, interaction form we choose to have in inviting these people. And if they answer these questions, then they might get like a $10, you know, gift card just to show thank you for sharing your story and thank you for participating. That would be just an idea. Uh, yes, Commissioner Dubnis, um, the Chair May, thanks for the question. I think my initial reaction is that there will be uh, significant roadblocks to that type of idea, but in order to um, analyze it uh, in more detail, we would need to have a specific proposal, um, you know, in terms of things like what, what would be the purpose of the, the survey, what will the information be used for, um, you know, uh, I think a a, a more specific proposal would be necessary to do a, a full analysis of whether it would be possible. Okay, thank you. Um, one yes, more sir. question, uh, Ms. Neff. I'm sorry, one more question. Would that the um, RIA tool, would that be used to help support that decision? Uh, Commissioner Devonish, Chairman, thank you for the question. Uh, the RIA tool I believe you're referring to is the racial equity impact analysis, if, I, if I'm not misunderstanding you. Um, yeah. That is used um, when policies or ordinances are placed before the City Council for approval in order to ensure that uh, the impacts of the, the policy or ordinance change or um, you know, the specific action being taken by the city council that that uh, the impacts of that decision have been fully analyzed. I don't believe that um, the RIA would have an application to what you proposed. I would just push back on that because we actually use the R and the RIA ourselves um, in certain aspects. And so I'd just be curious to the limitations in which that could be used, but I would really push for that, knowing that that is policy that's trying to be widely implemented. Uh, Chair May, uh, just to clarify, I don't think there's any reason that the, the commission couldn't on its own choose to just use that tool just because it's a useful tool. Um, certainly we that's something you could directed, do. We were directed by Kayla that um, we actually were required to do it if we propose anything I guess maybe that's what you were referring to. Yes, um, I, I apologize if I wasn't clear. If you bring a proposal before the city council, then um, completing the RIA would be uh, yeah. required. So there are more aspects to where that's used than just implementing policy and ordinances. Is that correct? I would say that the RIA is required in certain circumstances, including policies and ordinances, and perhaps a, a others that I'm not recalling off the top of my head. Those are the mm -hmm. obvious ones. Yeah. It could be used in other circumstances and sometimes is. Um, mm -hmm. So especially in an area where the, the council members felt it was particularly applicable, they could yeah. um, direct that one be created and filed for a specific yeah. item as well. Well, definitely, I think anything that is going to come from the commission that is going to be, you know, decided by anybody else should absolutely use that tool. So I just appreciate Commissioner or Vice Chair Devonish for um, bringing that to light because that is something that I know overall um, we're trying to implement within our commission. Um, but because of the 
the need for it, but also the efforts being made by the city to also implement that within just standard decision making, correct? Um, so just I'll push for that, but I just wanted to clarify if that was just the only two reasons that those um, that tool was being used or if there were were other. Um, Commissioner Lord, can you give your hand up? Um, I, you know, I just wanted to um, respond to Commissioner or excuse me, to Andrea, with um, respect to Commissioner Devonish's idea around paying community members potentially for providing feedback. And um, I actually hadn't thought of that as a specific use for the money, but um, I think that's actually really interesting. And if you, there's significant precedent for that in the private sector for um, paying for participation in surveys, focus groups, um, and providing feedback. And I think if you think about it more through the lens of data collection and, you know, purchasing kind of data, if you will, versus compensating individuals that it makes, uh, it might make a lot of sense and, and be a really good way to use dollars. So I, I guess I just wanted to share that possible, um, perspective and that and that might uh, uh, maybe impact the way you think about that. So, but to your point, we would need a very specific proposal for you to review. So I will take my hand down. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Review with the racial equity impact lens. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, so um, thank you for that great discussion. Um, we have some guests in the lobby, evidently. I don't see any. I know somebody is just trying to join. Oh. Yeah, I got I got checked from the meeting just now. I wonder if a couple yeah. of people too. I'm glad you made it back. Okay. Um, well, we are adjourning the meeting. So um, following Commissioner Lord's presentation. Um, so with that, we've concluded all items on our agenda for this meeting. And I'll see everyone back here for next month for the March 2021, 2022 regular meeting. Um, I would I do encourage all of the subcommittees um, if there if you don't have a chair elected at the moment, um, I just really encourage each of the subcommittees to schedule some uh, get a meeting on the schedule before our next um, March meeting to set some plans for the next coming months. Um, and I will reach out just to make sure that that schedule does or that, that you guys um, it, you're all able to make that connection. Um, but seeing no further business to come before us and without objection, I will declare this meeting adjourned. Thank you everyone and have a good night. Oh, and can the executive committee stay on if you have a chance if I if I'm not too late. Yeah, we can schedule a meeting to do. Um, well, maybe we can have a conversation and welcome everyone too. <laughs>